Hey there, boils and ghouls. It's your friend Taryn Tess. I'm back with another video. And uh, yeah, we finally got a 4K review to do today. And uh, this one here, I know this isn't anything new. I know I'm definitely being late to the table or late to the party with this one. But um, yeah, I imported this and I finally just got it in today. And uh, we'll get to that in just a second. But I also, I got something from uh, Amazon I'd like to show you. Uh, yeah, this is one that's been on my... You guys know I've been wanting to get stuff off of my wish list for quite a while, my Amazon wish list, and I got this one off, and I'm happy. Uh, four films from Alfred Hitchcock, the Warner Archive Collection, Alfred Hitchcock. So we have The Wrong Man with Henry Fonda, we have uh, Cary Grant, Joan Fontaine, Suspicion, that one I'm looking forward to seeing, I heard the storyline, that one sounds good. Dial in for Murder, I have seen that one, and I Confess with uh, Montgomery Cliff. And who else? And Baker. But yeah, this is cool. And each one, it's nice. Each one has their own disc. So it's not like anything's like double or triple stacked on anything. So that's cool. So, so really happy to finally get this baby. And uh, yeah, uh, let's see. Got quite a few of the Alfred Hitchcock movies. Mostly they're all on Blu-ray. But you know what? I'm fine with that. So... Happy to get this one. All right. Now, the reason we're really here is uh, today I finally got in from Second Sight. Um, well, I ordered this from Amazon. So, But on 4K, one of my easily my favorite uh, vampire film of all time. Like right up there, I've said before, you know, it's between this movie and Salem's Lot. Those two are always neck and neck. Which one's my favorite vampire movie of all time? But from 1977, the year of my birth. George Romero's Martin. And this is a beautiful edition. I'm really happy that I got this. This is so cool. Made in USA. I always remember that cover art. You know, I remember uh, way back in the day, the Thorn EMI, was it HBO Thorn EMI uh, videotape, you know, had that cover art. See it with someone you're sure of. And just, this movie is phenomenal. I love it. And, um, it's definitely one of Romero's most intelligent, well-made films. And if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend Yeah, If you love, you know, this is such a different take on the vampire genre. And you know, there's the side there. I got the back. You know, I was like, oh, man, I, I just remember the way I found out about this movie. Probably the way a lot of kids in the 1980s found out about it. I found out about it when I watched the uh, Screen Braids Volume 1 with Tom Savini. And, you know, they talked about him working on this movie and stuff. And it was a little bit later we found it in a, you know, we found it for rent and VHS, you know, rental stores and all that kind of stuff. So I rented it, or my parents rented it. They rented it for me because pretty much, you know, like after watching Scream Grace, I wanted to see everything that, I want to see all the movies that Savini had done the special effects for. And this was one of them. So my parents rented it for me. I watched it. I just fell in love with it. I just saw it, this movie is a masterpiece. This movie is just, it's, it's perfection. I mean, I just, I love it so much. And, uh, yeah. So, and we got, well, sorry. We got a gorgeous, gorgeous edition from Second Sight. And the amount of love and work that they put into this is amazing. And it's like, I've always hoped and dreamed of getting a really nice, beautiful collector's edition of this movie like this. And, didn't know if it was ever going to happen, you know, for the longest time, you know, all I had was this, you know, and it was just, you know, part of this four pack and everything. These other movies are kind of like, uh, didn't really jump at me. The main reason I kept it was for Martin, but, but now we got this beautiful thing. And so here we go. Uh, I'm not going to get too into this, but you know, here we go. I got that. It's kind of minimalist, I guess. And on here, nothing really. So, as I said, not too much on there, but let me flip it around. So, this is cool too. I love when I love when they do additions when they come with the CD soundtrack. That just kind of like a little extra, you know, just a little extra bit of coolness. Then you got the Blu-ray here, which, yeah, you know, pretty much all the discs look pretty similar. The uh, Blu-ray here, which, uh, yeah, uh, it is region locked. So if you don't have a region fleet, region, region fleet, region free player, you're not going to be able to watch the Blu-ray on this. 
So then you got the 4K Ultra HD here. I got that. I say I know other people have already shown this off, and so uh, you know, try not to spend too much time just dwelling on what's already in it. Pretty sure you already know. And you got this beautiful collectible booklet. So just like I said, you know, just I've always loved this movie so much, and I always really wanted there to be a beautiful, you know, nice. You know, beautiful edition of it and we finally got it and I'm so happy about this and you got the collector's cards nothing on the back of any of these are all blank but you have John Amplis as Martin Lincoln Maisel I think that's how you say is Tatakuda Tom Savini as Arthur uh, George Romero as the priest and Christine Forrest as uh, oh what was the character Oh, what was the character's name? Christine, I think it was. Yeah, I think. Christina, I think. Yeah. So I think, you know, she's playing kind of a character that's her namesake. But uh, anyway, just, yeah, this this edition really is nice. And you get the nice sturdy hard box. You know, it's not cheap flimsy plastic or anything like that. So, oh, yeah. So I'm very, very happy with this. And it is really such a nice upgrade from this, you know, just... Um, you know, yeah, at first, didn't know how long I was going to have to wait before I was going to be able to afford this, because when it first came out, it was like almost a hundred bucks to to uh, order something like this, you know, because of the import costs and everything else, you know, but anyway, so now I got it, uh, here we go, and it was, you know, 50 bucks, oh, for me, it was like 55, I think, so, hang on, hang on, I'm getting there, I promise, there we go, all right. Come on, stop fighting me. There we go. So anyway, so here we go. And I'm just, oh, wow. And uh, yeah, as far as the uh, the Blu-ray and the uh, 4K picture quality wise, they're pretty similar. Um, I would say maybe the, uh, the Blu-ray might be a tiny bit, you know, the image might be a little bit sharper, you know, maybe not as much uh, grain. I'm not really... Um, let's see, sound-wise, you have, uh, you know, they come with a uh, Master 5.1 and, uh, what was it, the 2.8, 2. I think? Yeah, it was the uh, 5.1 and 2.0, I believe. So, anyway, so, yeah, also, too, sorry, I forgot about the J card. Let's talk about the bonus features. You have uh, a new Second Sight 4K restoration supervised and approved by Director of Photography Marco, Michael Gornick. Present HDR, so you do get high dynamic range. You got a boatload of audio commentaries. You got one with George Romero, John Amplis, and Tom Savini. You have one uh, with uh, George Romero, Richard P. Rubenstein, Tom Savini, Michael Gornick, and Donald Rubenstein, which is the commentary I believe is on this one. Uh, a new audio commentary by Kat Ellinger. A new audio commentary by Travis Crawford. Taste the Blood of Martin, a new feature-length documentary including Location Tour. That's a That was a really nice uh, documentary to watch you know you get you know all different kinds of perspectives from everybody you know, was associated, almost everybody associated from the movie John Amplis who uh, John Amplis you know honestly he's amazing you really need to follow him on Facebook if you get a chance and uh, you know but like John Amplis Michael Gornick Tom Savini Tony Buba Christine Forrest you know on and on you know it's like yeah it's really it's a really nice well done documentary um, let's see Scoring the Shadows, a new interview with composer Donald Rubenstein. J. Roy, new and used furniture, a short film by Tony Buba. Making Martin, a recounting, which is a bonus kind of featurette documentary that's on the DVD here. Uh, the trailer and TV and radio spots. So, and then limited edition contents. Rigid slipcase with original classic artwork. Softcover book with new essays by Daniel Bird, Miranda Corcoran. Corcoran, uh, Travis Crawford, Heather Drain, Kat Ellinger, Andrew Graves, Alexandra Helen Heller Nicholas, Elena Lazik, Stephen Thrower, John Towelson, Simon Ward, and Tony Williams. The original CD uh, soundtrack by Donald Rubenstein. Five collectors character art cards illustrated by Alan Adam Stothard. Stothard, yeah. But anyway, so yeah, here we go. And, um, just, uh, I do have to admit, though, you know, I mean, in terms of picture quality-wise, I am a tiny bit disappointed by this because 
I did hope that uh, it was going to look a little bit cleaner, but, um, you know, it, it doesn't really, like, with the HDR, and there is quite a high level of uh, grain in the picture. Of course, this is old 17, or old 17. My God, I'm sorry. I got a brain fart tonight. Anyway, um, no, this is old 16 millimeter. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, doing the 4K transfer and including high dynamic range, it's only going to go so far. So the movie, um, it doesn't look very, if you're going into this thinking it's going to look very cleaned up, very polished up, kind of more, you know, like digitally cleaned up from this, then no, honestly, it's, you know, the movie does look, it's, um, I think in a way kind of though, you could say it adds to the charm of the film because what it does is, uh, you know, you got that graininess, it has that kind of almost sleazy quality to it, that kind of grunge quality that, that kind of makes it work as a film. I think as a, you know, if you're a VHS enthusiast, you know, and, you know, you love that kind of kind of really rough looking picture quality, I think you're going to really appreciate this, the way this looks. But um, if you're going in there looking for it to look completely like brand new and cleaned up and, and you know, not look like a an old film and look more like something, you know, that was made, you know, um, you know, something that was made like last year as opposed to like 46 years ago, you're not going to get that, you know, or 47 years ago. But, uh, you know, I think though, you know, like I said, I think probably that you could kind of say that the, like I said, the, you know, the 4K transfer plus the HDR kind of adds to it, you know, it kind of gives it that little extra bit that kind of gives it that, you know, that kind of rough kind of garage band feel to it, you know, and I think it kind of does. I think it kind of works for a movie like this. Unfortunately, like some of the um, scenes are a little kind of, after a while, it does kind of get a little rough on the eyes. I'm not going to lie. There are a couple of times I was watching, I kind of like, after all, I just kind of, uh, yeah, I kind of had to look away for a second, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, unfortunately, as far as like the, uh, yeah, uh, this was at a time before, you know, Tom Savini started using the, like, Dick Smith formula, I believe it was, for, uh, you know, fake blood, you know, I think he was, what they call it, 3M blood, it was the same blood they used for Dawn of the Dead, so unfortunately, yeah, the 4K and the, um, you know, HDR doesn't really, like, make the blood look any more authentic, it still looks kind of like red nail polish, or as, like, he always said, it looks like melted crayons, you know, but, uh, Honestly, I still, I'm not, you know, because I love this movie so much and because of the quality of the movie, the quality of the performances and the writing and everything else, you know, 50 bucks, I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not sad that I bought this. I'm not upset that I paid for it. You know, I think considering everything that I get with it, I think, you know, I got a good deal out of this. It's a beautiful collector's edition and, uh, you know, and from George Romero, I miss him. May he rest in peace. So, you know, honestly, I would say, yeah, you know, I would honestly strongly urge you to check this out, you know, if you haven't already. Um, like I said, though, you know, that's kind of the big thing, though. I mean, if you have this and you're hoping this is going to look a whole lot better and it's going to look a lot, the picture, like the colors are going to be more crisp and clean and everything else, you're not really going to get that. So, you know, you might want to just decide to stick with this if this is what you got, but... Uh, like I said, I'm not upset that I paid the money for this. I'm not sad that I bought it. I'm happy with it. And, uh, you know, just because of the quality of the film, you know, it's like 50 bucks. I didn't mind paying for it. And, um, yeah. One thing I will actually suggest, though, you know, um, I didn't even think about this until I was watching the bonus features, like watching the documentary. The, what was it? The Taste the, was it Taste the Blood of Martin or uh yeah taste the blood of mark i was watching that and they were, and you know it's like they kept talking about how ramiro his real uh vision was to watch this movie in black and white so i would strongly urge if you have this or even if you have this you know maybe one of these days you know what just put it on and watch it and just completely turn the color off and it's definitely an interesting experience you know and knowing that that's really what ramiro wanted he wanted this movie to be in black and white he wanted it to look kind of like a black and white kind of avant-garde kind of art film and everything else. And, um, yeah, unfortunately, this isn't the three-hour version, you know, that we've heard so many rumors about stuff. I would love to see that, but, you know, there was like, I think it was like a three, almost three-hour or two-and-a-half-hour black and white version of this movie that he did. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, like supposedly they were trying to locate this print, but 
I guess not. Uh, but uh, anyhow, yeah. And uh, when I wash it, it was funny because like when I turned the color off and I just fine tuned the uh, the uh, brightness a little bit, it was funny because I was like, wow, this actually looks like it almost looks like I'm watching Clerks. You know, if you've seen the movie Clerks, you know the that kind of you know really rough grainy black and white feel of it and everything else you know that's what this movie has it almost feels like you're watching clerks you know so i mean that's kind of interesting but i would say yeah you know if you do have a minute you know you have some time to kill and you love this movie give it a shot watch it just turn the color off and you know just kind of know like you kind of watch the movie the way that romero actually really intended for it to be seen so but anyway so yeah i think i'm about done here and i can't Honestly, I can't recommend this enough, and it's so beautiful. I'm so glad to be holding this in my hands, and for a movie that I loved that I wasn't sure was ever going to get any kind of a, a beautiful collector's edition or anything like that. It was something I prayed for, didn't know that it was ever going to happen, but here we are. I'm holding it right here in my hands, and I could not be happier about it. So so that's it. So uh, if anybody took the time to watch this, I thank you for doing it, and I appreciate you for doing it. I really do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, would you please leave it a like? If you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And uh, there's going to be more 4K reviews coming. And uh, looking forward to you know making more videos for you guys. And uh, that's it. So everybody, take care. Have a good night. I'll see you all later.